In this tutorial, we'll smooth out the breaking of the AI as well as add the ability for the AI to use its brake light. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so before we implement the brake light to our AI car, we actually want to improve the braking because currently it's way too aggressive. Well, that's totally fine if we're going double the intended top speed, for example, but even if we're going one kilometer above the top speed, we brake 100%. So I want to smooth out the braking on those smaller values so that we have better braking around the corner. The bonus is that it will also improve the brake light overall, so it's a two for one special really. So without further ado, let's go ahead and um, improve the braking first and then add the uh, brake light. So to do that, we're going to open up our content browser and once you're in the content folder, you want to go to the AI folder. And once we're here, we want to open up this AIC underscore vehicle AI. And once we're here, we want to open up the function where we calculate the braking that was in the calculate throttle slash brake. So under my blueprint, under functions, we want to double click and open up calculate throttle slash brake. And now that we're here, we want to go ahead and smooth out the brake. So how are we going to smooth out the brake? Well, my idea is we're going to use a map range clamp. And the idea is that um, if we're just a small bit above the top speed, we smooth out between zero and one. So we do kind of a low where we check, okay, if we're just a small bit above the top speed, let's just do a small brake value. But if we're way above the top speed, we do aggressive break and we're going to be doing that with a map range clamp. Now if it sounds really confusing it's going to be way more understandable once we actually code the thing. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is here in the open I'm going to right click and we're going to type in a uh, map range clamp and we're going to use the clamped one not the unclamped one. We're going to left click on that and here we have the map range clamp. Now the next thing we're going to do is the value here we're going to connect the current speed of the get current speed function. We're going to connect that current speed into here. Then the in range A should be the top speed. So we're going to right click over here and search for top speed. There's going to be a calculate top speed and a get top speed. We want to use the get top speed. We're going to connect that into the in range A. And then finally, we're going to add the top speed to in range B. But before we do that, we need to add an extra bit of value. So what we're going to do, we're going to drag off the top speed and type in plus on our keyboard and then use the add operator. We're going to click on that. And then finally, we're going to connect that to the in range B. We're going to set this value to five. And the idea is, oh, before I explain it, the out range B is going to be one. And now I can explain it. So the idea is right, that if our current speed is equal to the top speed, we apply no braking. If let's, for example, say our current speed is one kilometer above the top speed, then we apply 0.2 braking because it smooths between zero and one based on that um, small area. If we are above top speed plus five, we uh, apply brake 100%. There's no smoothing. There's only smoothing when we have like a little above the current. Our current speed is a little above the top speed. Then we apply smoothing. And yeah, this will help smooth out the brake. One more thing we can do to help this even more is in real life, if you let go of the throttle and the brake, the car naturally slows, the, uh, slows down. And this is called um, free in your car and we can implement something like that really easily here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag off the stop speed and do a plus again and then we're going to click on add to add a new add node and then we're going to set this value to one and plug that into the in range A. So the idea behind this is that if we're for example uh, our current speed is above the top speed but under top speed plus one we just let go of the brake and then naturally let the car slow down. So we free the car and that will help with um, really small adjustments to the brake and we'll just look smoother around the turns which is what we want. Now with that out of the way let's go ahead and clean this up a bit. So first this current speed we're going to convert this in a variable because this um, node layout is a bit ugly so we're going to hold alt on our keyboard on the left click between current speed and value then we're going to go to the left select our calculate throttle slash brake and our get current speed and our controlled vehicle we're going to move that to the side we're going to drag off our current speed and promote to a local variable. That means that this variable is only available in this function. And we're going to change this to current speed should be a good name. And we're going to move this up and connect the uh, get current speeds execution pin to the set node. And then finally, we're going to connect this execution pin into the branch node. And this output from current speed, we're going to connect to this greater or equal then. And finally, we're going to move all of this together and move that together move this a bit up to so clean that up. And now we just need to 
clean up this bit. Oh, wait, first we have to connect back up the current speed. So we're going to right click here, type in current speed. So current speed. We're going to use the get current speed variable over here and connect that into the value. And now we're ready to go. Okay, so to clean this up, we're just going to move this return node over here to the bottom. We're going to select all of these, move it a bit up, move this return node a bit to the right. We're going to move this up here, move this a bit here, move this a bit here, move this a bit here. Yeah, this is fine. And we're going to connect this into the break. And finally, let's just move this up a bit. We're going to select all of these nodes over here, press C to comment, and we'll call this code smooth break based on current speed. So yeah, that is descriptive enough, I think. Let's just move this a bit to the right. And yeah, this is set up. We're going to move this return node back to where it was. And finally, we're going to double click on this line connecting from false to this return node so that we create a reroute node. We're going to move this down here, maybe a bit to the right. Um, maybe move this comment block as well a bit to your right and um, just this and yeah now this is cleaned up and it looks neat and is uh, pretty self-explanatory um, now one important thing this you can uh, store on the uh, AI car, so every car can have its own values, and that would be better for a completed final game, so that you can control the braking values for each car. But for this tutorial, I'm not going to explain or go over that, because it's just going to waste a lot of time, which we can use for just showing the AI, just like I just wasted time over there explaining that. Anyway, now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and implement the brake light. Now, before we can implement the brake light, we just like we had to do for the throttle and the brake, we actually need to update our blueprint interface for our car to be able to have a function where we can set the brake light. So to do that, we're going to open up our content browser. We're going to open up the BPI underscore is vehicle. We're going to top left and we're going to add a new function. This function we're going to call set brake light. I'm going to press enter to save that. We're going to add a Boolean input because that's how you control a brake light. So in the bottom right under inputs, we're going to click on add. Then it creates a boolean for us, which is good. I'm going to rename this to break light should be a good name. Then finally, I'm going to take the set break light and move it to the set steering. So that it's under the set break, which uh, just looks cleaner. Anyway, we can compile, save. We can close this because we don't need it for now. And now we can go ahead and implement the break light in our vehicle. To do that, we're going to open up our content browser, go to the content folder, go to vehicle template, go to blueprints, and then here we're going to open up the vehicle advanced pawn and we want to go to the event graph so here under my blueprint double click on the event graph and now here on the right side is where we put our ai code so to create space i'm just going to move this ai set breaking to the right and now we have space over here for the braking code. So to add the braking code, we're going to right click and type in brake light. And there's going to be an event, event set brake light. You want to use that, so left click on that. And how do we set the brake light? Well, if we go to the player braking code, you can see that they use this brake lights function. And that is the thing that controls the brake lights. So what we need to do is we need to go back to this event set brake lights. We drag off of this and type in brake lights and make sure it is brake lights. This is the function name. Just want to click on that. And then finally, we want to connect this brake light into the is braking. And then we want to select both of these, press C to comment, and we'll call this AI set brake light so that we know that it is um, AI code that we're working with. And yeah, this is cleaned up and ready to go. Maybe just move this and make it a bit bigger. Um, just a bit on the bottom. And yeah, this is good looking and ready to go. Anyway, with that out of the way, we can compile and save and we can implement this in our AI controller for our vehicle. So we're going to go to the AIC vehicle AI again. We're going to go to the event graph and then we're going to move all the way to the right where we do the set break code. And here we're going to set the uh, break light. So we're going to drag off of this and do a set break light message. We're going to left click and select that. And now with that out of the way, for our target, we need Need to connect our controlled vehicle. Now to clean this up a bit, I'm going to right click and type in control and we're going to get the controlled vehicle uh, variable. And finally, we're going to connect that into the target. Now the idea behind calculating the brake light is by using this brake value over here. So what we do is we use a greater than node. And if this brake value is above a certain value, we know we are braking. So how are we going to do that? We're going to drag off this brake value over here, then type in greater 
greater. There's going to be two options, greater or greater equal. Let's go ahead and use greater equal. I'm going to set this value to example 0.1. So if our breaking value is above uh, is above 0.1, sorry, then we can uh, turn on the brake light. So if I were to connect this boolean over here into the brake light, our brake light will work, but there is a problem. So I'm going to compile and save and show this. Now, if you have, um, uh, wait, before I do that, we're going to move this car over here to the center and move it back a bit because for me, it's going to be easier to follow the AI car as a player car that is going to use F8. And we're just going to be able to see the smaller nuances. But anyway, with that out of the way, the first thing I want to say is that if you have some sort of epilepsy or something, be warned that there's going to be a bit of flickering now. And I'll tell you when the flickering is done so you can look away. But anyway, now with that out of the way, let's see if our car drives. Actually, wait, there's an error. Um, this is not the player start. We want to move this car closer to the player start. So over here, move it over here. And now we'll be in front of our player. Anyway, so if you drive a bit forward, then we can see our AI car brakes, but the brake light flickers a lot. And uh, that's really a problem. And it's going to happen at every turn. And if you did look away because of that epilepsy warning, you can totally look back now. It's totally fine. I'm done with that. Um, so how are we going to uh, fix that flickering? Well, if we go to our AIC underscore vehicle AI, something we can do is we can disconnect all of these um, connections over here by holding Alt and left clicking on each one. We're going to move the controlled vehicle and set brake light out of the way. But what we can do is we can drag off of this um, Boolean and do a branch node. So type in branch. We're going to select the branch node. We're going to connect the set break execution pin into the branch and then if this is true we're going to move the set break light back in here and the controlled vehicle so we're going to connect that to the target and if this is true turn on the brake light but after this we're going to drag out of this and do a delay so we're going to type in delay and we're going to use retriggerable delay not normal delay not until next tick retriggerable delay we're going to set this value to 0.3 and then finally we're going to se select this set brake light and controlled vehicle, control copy and control paste it and connect the completed to that. Now, what's the idea behind this code? How does it work? Well, the idea is that if we um, are at a brake value where we turn on the brake light, then we'll turn on the brake light. But then we keep the brake lights on for 0.3 seconds so that um, if uh, the AI doesn't break in between that time, we can turn it off. So wait, let me just turn off this brake light over here. Just make sure it is unticked. But anyway, the idea is that um, if this retriggerable delay gets retriggered, aka if our brake light turns back on, it extends the duration that it is on. If it doesn't, then the brake light turns off. So what this means is that um, for that moment where the brake light turns off, we secretly keep it on even though the car isn't braking. Now this might be a bit disingenuous and isn't a 100% accurate representation of how the AI brakes, but it uh, is pretty good looking and it isn't too far off from how the AI breaks. So a player could technically use that uh, braking pattern to be able to brake. It's not really cheating or anything. It's just a hack to make the brake like look a bit better. Now with that out of the way, all we're going to do is just clean this up. So I'm going to select the branch, set brake light, take everything over here, move it to right, move this a bit closer, select all of this and press C to common. And we're going to call this smooth brake light. So smooth brake light should be a good name. I'm going to press enter. Now we're going to compile, save, go to the vehicle example map and test our code. So I'm press tab to first person and we'll see the AI breaks and then the light turns on and yeah, perfectly working, perfectly fine. Let's see now. And it goes, brake lights. I, I overshot that one. Anyway, let's see now. Brake light turns on, which is good. Let's see now what he does over here. And it's turning, brake light turns on. And yeah, it was smooth over there. And let's see one more turn, so this turn over here. Brake light turns on and works perfectly fine. So the brake light is smooth overall and um, works pretty well. And yeah, uh, one more thing before I go. Um, something you can do is if you want the brake light to be on for longer, you can lower this value over here. Then what will happen is that um, even the, if the car is just breaking a small bit, its light is going to turn on. So something you can do is maybe make the 0 0.01. So it's just going to be on for way longer. But for one, it's just a nice value for me. 
And something you can also do is you can uh, change this delay so that the brake light uh, check is a bit longer. This will also increase the general brake light. And if you, you know, if you still get a bit of flickering, just play around with this delay and that should remove the flickering. Something you can also do is you can technically, for each car you work on, you can have a custom delay and a custom smoothing code you can have. But um, I'm not going to do that this tutorial. And personally, I don't think um, this uh, can really go wrong if you use a different car. I still think that this code will work with most cars you throw at it anyway. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. One more thing before I go is sorry, I'm, I'm just really dragging this out. But I know of a bug where if the AI car is going around the track, and it goes to the beginning of the track, then it for some reason, some reason just swerves and breaks. I know about this. In the next tutorial, I will fix it. And that tutorial is going to release tomorrow at the same time this tutorial releases. So just um, look out for that. It's going to be a really small video explaining uh, how why the bug happens and um, just overall fixing it. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial guys, thanks for watching, if you like the content please subscribe, hit like if you liked the video, hit dislike if you didn't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Good night everybody.